For better AI images, learn the language. Hi everybody, my name is Greg Crable and this is my podcast, Something I Learned Yesterday, in which I take one issue, often from the world of publishing, and try to explain it in about three or four minutes. Today I talk about AI image generation. When my oldest child was a lad, we'd go for walks in the woods, and I told him a story about two brothers who went hiking. When they got home, their father asked what they saw. The first boy said, a bunch of trees and some birds. The second boy said, there were a lot of sweet gum and birch trees, but we saw a stand of old poplars, a little grove of white oaks, a few red oaks, and a lot of maples. There were a ton of robins, and I heard Carolina chickadees and cardinals. I think I saw a red-tailed hawk up in a tree, and there were a lot of downy woodpeckers, too. I asked my son, which boy got more out of the walk? There's something analogous when you use an AI image generator. If I go to an AI image generator and say, make me an image of somebody reading an email, I might get a nice result, but there are so many options for stylizing an image. Here are some. Watercolor, oil painting, charcoal drawing, black light, a cartoon image, whimsical animation, historical illustration, cyberpunk futurism. In addition to all that, you can say, in the style of, and then list some artists you like. By the way, my, my list, my previous list, wasn't even a tenth of all the different kinds of styles you could ask for. But you could mention an artist like Vincent van Gogh, Georgia O'Keeffe, Jackson Pollock, or you can mention a more modern art style like Shintaro Kago or Jack Kirby or whatever you like. Then there's a whole range of other specs you can provide. Like aspect ratio is pretty basic. That's the ratio between the width and the height. Like 9 by 16 would be typical for a portrait. You can specify a camera angle or perspective such as bird's eye view or eye level. Some images might be more appropriate with harsh, harsh shadows or soft lighting. You can even use time of day, like morning or twilight. Different textures work better for different images, like glossy or matte or smooth. Now, I don't know much about cameras, but you can specify what kind of camera, what shutter speed, aperture settings, things like that. What kind of weather do you want in your image? Is there a relevant historical setting or context? Should it be futuristic or fantastical? I'm not well-versed in all these things. I know what I like when I see it, but I can't tell you what style or artist I would like to imitate. There's a whole language to learn about AI art. But here's an interesting hack. You can use one AI to help with another AI. For example, you can use ChatGPT to help design your mid-journey prompt. So if you're in the business of creating images to go along with articles, start paying attention to different styles of images. Do you like Tron or Tim Burton or Lord of the Rings or Mad Magazine or Frank Franzetta or Norman Rockwell? Do you want to create your own style to go with your brand? Learn the words that can communicate that style to the AI image generators and then start creating prompts that incorporate all those style characteristics so that you can get a brand specific kind of image that you want. It's a fun thing to play around with. There are a lot of websites that have, you know, examples of prompts for images and you can learn a lot by, by going through there, looking at the examples and reading the kind of prompt that they use. But you can use this to come up with a brand specific style. I think that's a good thing to pursue. So that's my idea. I'm curious what you have to say. Leave a comment below and thanks so much for listening.